learners this session is going to be on event logistics i am reema ghoshal and i am an executive producer with team work arts one of not just india's but world's leading arts and entertainment companies and i'm incredibly excited to be sharing my experience with all of you so today's topic event logistics we're going to cover a few things under this understanding logistics elements of logistics and i have a very interesting case study for all of you which is from the jaipur literature festival so let's begin understanding logistics using the human anatomy well you know when i was in university logistics was of course one of the key topics as part of my events and mass communication course and what we were explained is using the human anatomy so let's say our event is uh, happening at a hotel in jaipur so which is the heart uh all the people who are staying in different hotels are the limbs so how are the people from the limbs reaching the heart well that's through the veins the arteries uh the entire circulation and that's what logistics is all about logistics basically means connecting one item or one component of the festival with the other logistics is literally the lifeline of any cultural event So let's say you've actually organized an event but how are the people coming to the event how are your supplies coming to the event supplies would include your uh, decor that's coming in the tenting that's required or the security cameras that are required uh, how is the crew coming in how are um, so everything that's at the festival like so once you've picked a venue how is everything coming in and going out and all of that is what logistics is all about Well the word actually sounds complicated but it's all about the connections so these are connecting one part of the event to the other parts it's connecting people and the key to logistics is communication i have divided the idea of logistics into two parts quantitative and qualitative the quantitative part of logistics involves supply so this like i said the supply of all of your material so when you're doing a cultural events you need a lot of stuff from the design collaterals that are coming in or all of your tenting your decor your food uh, all of that a is the supply of the items the second is the supply of your customers your audiences so how are your customers coming to the festival where are they parking if they are parking in a public parking who's taking care of the security of all of this so that is what supply the quantitative part of logistics is all about so let's take an example of one of these uh, so one an international band toured to india last year and the concert took place in one of the biggest stadiums in mumbai so they created a plan where basically people could park their cars at a particular spot and then they were shuttled or ferried to the venue and that is how that's a good example of logistics and supplying your audiences transport transport trust me is so important to a cultural event transport would include all of your travel air uh, you know uh, booking your tickets are you coming by train are you coming by road and i'm going to cover the part of transport as logistics including accommodation as part of my case study and the third aspect of the quantitative uh, part of logistics is security we are living in times where uh you know there are number of threats man made natural uh you know there's a lot of uh you know we we would like to feel safe we would like to feel secure when we are going to an event if we are traveling to that event if we are traveling to that country for the first time if we are traveling to that part of the city for the first time and that's where security also is one of the very key part of logistics and like i said logistics has so many things and it'll be impossible for us to cover everything in one go but i hope to do a detailed study on security at some point in one of these sessions moving to the qualitative part communication is key information networks what is it that you're communicating you have to make sure that whatever you're communicating is the same communication that is going out to everybody there's a chain of action if you're saying that the apple is red you have to make sure that person who's at the top till the last vendor knows that the apple is red i'm going to talk about it when i come to that part so supply like i said customers 
how are your customers coming so accessibility so from this point comes the idea of accessibility how accessible is your cultural event how are you reaching there do you have to change metros how do you know where to come what is the closest metro station if you're taking an uber if you're taking a cab can you take uh, will it be available when you're leaving till what time is the event going on so when you're talking about the logistics of the customers this is pretty much working around the idea of accessibility and how do you ensure that a customer who has paid to maybe come to the event or who has taken time from their busy schedule to come to the festival or your event and they easily if they are parking their car is there a valet system if they are paying for parking is it a reasonable amount that they are paying for parking if it is a free parking is it safe and secure for them so a customer the only way that a customer can actually experience uh, and engage at the event is only when they are accessible to it so that's the first part the products and the facilities so these these are the second part so when i talk about facilities this could mean uh, having your portable bathrooms that come in or any other facility which is around food or if you need like a dfmd to check the luggage that's coming in or if you actually need physical security guards which is a facility that has been provided or if you need people who are actually doing the registration who are actually zapping the barcodes who are actually giving you a badge these are all facilities that comprise logistics products products could mean anything from your merchandise products could mean or like i said before all the stuff that's coming in your tents your flowers your chairs uh you know all of your signage all of those come under products so basically just to sum up the supply part of it if your heart which is your venue does not get the desired blood to pump it it's just lying there so basically that's what i am talking about transport and accommodation well like i said i am incredibly excited to be sharing this case study with all of you just a few pointers before we go move to the case study is inventory inventory basically means knowing what your requirement is so do you need 500 cars in those 500 cars do you need buses do you need sedans do you need a hatchback do you need a bigger a minivan what are the kind of cars that you need or what are the kind of road transport uh facilitators vehicles that you need under inventory or if you're doing accommodation how many rooms do you need do you need single rooms do you need double rooms do you need a suite do you need a big if, if there's a celebrity coming in a vip guest coming in do you need to block a particular floor so what is that requirement the inventory that you have so you give an inventory let's say you need 500 cars you need 1000 rooms and then you move from there so within this is where you kind of play around with the second part is budgeting so once so these two aspects are kind of correlated when you're doing budgeting it could actually be that you have an x budget and you kind of figure out the inventory within that budget or alternatively what you could do is you could work out your inventory and then work the budget around it so let's say if your budget does not allow you five cars you could actually use the three cars and make them shuttle a couple of times or let's say if you do not have enough room nights you can actually look at alternative uh, alternative hotels or other properties so these two are correlated planning this is where the key part comes in that now that you've got your inventory you've blocked your budget how are you planning it how are you allocating your cars how are you allocating your rooms let's say there's somebody who needs uh, who's not comfortable climbing stairs so you have to make sure that you're planning to give them a room which is on the ground floor or in an accommodation which probably has an elevator for them or ex- uh, or special access which will give them special access to their particular floor or for example if somebody uh, has some sort of a sickness they have motion sickness so maybe not put them in a car but you make sure that they come by train the train could also lead to motion sickness or maybe have them come on a flight or maybe kind of break their journey if they're traveling to a dis- for a distance you kind of break their journey and make sure that they travel accordingly training so because transport and logistics is one of the biggest departments one of the most important training your staff training your crew is very very crucial how logistics is also especially the transport and accommodation part is also a lot about client servicing so it's a it's very important to train your team 
to manage situations, to manage prices, to know how to talk to your clientele. Execution. Like I said, now that you're done with your inventory, budgeting, planning, you've trained your team, how are you actually executing it? How are you making sure? Are you calling the drivers? Are you calling the hotel? Has the hotel kept the rooms ready? Is the execution part of it? Crisis management, like I said, nothing in, on this earth is foolproof. There will be a crisis, a flight could be delayed, uh, a hotel room could be uh, not prepared in time, somebody could have fallen sick. So always be ready for crisis management. And last is feedback. All events, all things in life are continuously work in progress. I think I've said this before, nothing can be planned for future, nothing can be improved unless you take feedback. We have to really check with the people who we are working with. Did they like the car that they were in? Was it smelling nice? Was their, tra was their travel time convenient to them? Was it comfortable to them? All of these things need to be factored in. So this was the quantitative part of logistics that we were talking about. Moving to the qualitative part, before I move to the case study, information network, communication is key. More than often what happens is that there isn't a clear chain of communication. So, like I said, if I say the apple is red, eventually the communication that's probably going out to the last vendor is, I need 20 apples. Nobody said if I need 20 red apples or if apple is red. So, the most important thing is that you have to have a line of command and you have to have a hierarchy. You need to know that if it is a crisis about programming, who is the person disseminating that information? If there is a crisis about transport or a security concern, how is that information being disseminated? Because more than often, there's a lot of Chinese whispers where um, I've said something and incorrect information goes out to somebody. There's rumor spreading, there's panic. And because communication is key, we have to make sure that as part of logistics, we have those clearly set. Evacuation and emergency plans. So, like I said, we're living in times where we want to feel secure, we want to feel safe when we're going somewhere. However, there are a number of things, there are natural causes, there are man-made causes, and every cultural event. May it be a party that you're throwing in a hotel, or may it be a wedding that you're doing, there has to be an evacuation and emergency plan. What if it rains? What are you going to do if it's an outdoor event? What if uh, you do not get a particular permission on time? What if there is somebody who is being, uh, who's making you uncomfortable at a venue? So what are the evacuation and emergency plans? Are very key and important part of the information network. There's a thing called idiot proofing or making sure that nothing falls through the cracks. So what happens is like you've planned everything and you know you've done your inventory, your planning, your training, but suddenly uh, you were supposed to have 10 volunteers. One volunteer has backed out and there's a new person who does not know that who's the driver that's going to a particular venue or what is the next session all about. And that's where you've planned everything and you've done your, pla uh, you've done your planning, inventory, everything and things fall through cracks. So we have to make sure that if there is a new person coming joining the team or there's an addition, there's a change that is being clearly communicated and everybody from the director of the festival or the curator of that particular cultural event to the vendor who's probably providing you chairs knows the basic details about that particular event. Working on alternative plans in crisis management, like I said, important to have plans like if you are doing a festival or a cultural event where there's something else supposed to happen or you know that the previous uh, event that was at that venue took longer to dismantle all of us have to have an alternative plan uniformity in communication and last but not the least avoid rumors and panic there's nothing worse at a cultural event than actually spreading rumors that hey you know what happened well it may be true it may be not always make sure that you verify the information from the right authorities some images from some of the lit fests that we've done in India and abroad. Uh, you can see the decor, you can see the speakers, and trust me, this is the heart. And to bring everything together, to make sure that the decor looks like it's looking right now, there's been a lot of logistics, a lot of planning, a lot of communication that has gone into it. And here we are at the exciting part of the case study. So we're gonna do a logistics, transport and accommodation case study from the Jaipur Literature Festival. 
So like I said, transport is considered the lifeline of any event. It is the mode by which people, including your guests, speakers, general public, and most importantly, your crew reach the actual spot. So, like I said, you know, like when you're doing a cultural event, there are so many people making sure that the event's happening. There are your uh, people who are recording the videos, photographers, your actual crew, your programming team, your curators, uh, the guests who are performing, the artists who are performing, the musicians, uh, your audience members, your delegates, and everybody has to be directed on how to reach the venue. And that is where the logistics and accommodation come into place. The Jaipur Literature Festival, on an average, does the accommodation and, uh, and logistics of over 1,500 people. Like I said, which does include the crew, the guests, the journalists, the press, the media, the general public, everybody else. And that's not an easy task. Over five days of the actual festival and a planning that goes on for more than three months. So the pre-festival, let's start the pre-festival and I'll also talk about examples. So Jaipur in January is a popular hub for weddings, especially with the trend of having a wedding which is not in the same city, having a wedding which is out, you know, in an exotic location like Jaipur or in a palace. That's the hub in January. So what happens is that we have to start by blocking our inventory. So we have to make sure that the dates that the festival is on for and the dates before and after because the crew or a lot of the directors and the speakers, they do not really come in on the actual days. They have come there like 10 days in advance. So basically, uh, you know, you have to kind of dodge your way around these destination weddings and make sure that you've got the dates that you've wanted for. You've got the right type, the right amount of rooms, you've got the right amount of cars. So that's the first part when we are pre planning it pre-festival. It's also a lot about putting this information out on your website so that the general audience can purchase the hotels that they want to or if they want to see what are the options in Jaipur or if they want to book their cabs because like I said, the Jaipur Literature Festival is an international festival happening in Jaipur, Rajasthan, India. So we have a lot of guests who come in from America, uh, who come in from Europe, who probably coming in from other parts of Asia, Australia and people who have not been to the city before. So for them, the website which allows you to book a hotel, book your cab is their one-stop solution for everything. The second part is planning. You've now planned, you've, you've finally blocked your inventory, you've planned it, you've budgeted it. The second part, the next part is the allocation. So there are people who would probably, you know, if somebody is going to Jaipur, there's this whole thing about living in actually a palace. So you have to allocate the people as per the requirement. If it's a five-star hotel, four-star hotel, are they coming as a big family? Do they need a bigger card? Are they going to be comfortable in a sedan? Uh, will they need something which is more... Um, spacious if they have more luggage. So all of these parts are the initial part of the pre-festival. Arrivals. So well, once the festival is about to begin and we've done all of our planning and budgeting and allocation, the key thing is the arrivals. So people in Jaipur usually come by three means, which is your air. Of course, if they're taking flights from wherever they're coming, they're coming by train and they're coming by road. So our entire planning has to be around this. So what we do is we do set up a desk at the airport because that's the place where a major chunk of our guests who are actually the speakers, musicians and the delegates are coming from. So we have a desk that makes sure that they have a sheet, all the flights are demarcated, they are marked and there's somebody to greet and take them to their required cars. From there they're taken to their hotels. So that's the arrival part. Same at the railway station. So the railway stations are a little different from the airports where you can actually place a desk. So what happens is you actually put a desk or you kind of tell the person that this is where you're supposed to come and meet me. So that's how and of course car then it's the easiest form of travel where from one destination to the other it's a door to door service that you have and that's what the arrivals are all about. Like I said edit proofing, no question is ever irrelevant. It's important to ask the slightest question. You may not know your whereabouts within Jaipur or you may not know where the person is being picked up from. So keep asking questions. We have to make sure that nothing falls through the cracks. So during the festival, so like I said, it's a five day festival. There are thousands of people coming to the festival. There are a lot of people who have actually booked their accommodation, travel, transport via us. 
so because coming back to the fact where logistics is key now you you are at your venue you've organized your venue it's looking great it's looking stunning the stage is great the sound system is great now if your logistics of travel and transport fail how is your speaker actually coming to the venue let's say the speakers come to jaipur how are they coming to the venue on time all of that is the part of execution so you've planned everything like i said your your festival grounds are looking great the audiences are there uh the part of logistics is to make sure that your speakers your delegates your artists everybody is reaching there on time even if you're talking about the parking like you know a person who is an audience member has reached the venue on time there's enough time for him or her to park go into the venue but if the parking's not ready if they don't know where to park so all of this come under the execution of transport and logistics on ground crisis management i'm going to talk about a few of the possible crises that can happen and what to prepare for in my next slide client and guest servicing well the key is smile always smile you may not have the solution to all the problems you may not know where the driver has disappeared or you may not know how many people have actually parked but smile assure people that you're listening to them listening smiling communication tell them that you're going to get back to them and that's like i said qualitatively a key part of logistics is communication so if you make sure that whoever you're communicating with is assured that you've heard their grievance you've heard their issue you've heard their concern and eventually you will get back to them within a particular time frame it can't be where you kind of say i'll get back to you and then not get back to them in 15 minutes 20 minutes in an hour so these are during the festival uh when you're doing long festivals when a festival goes beyond 3 days there's a lot of fatigue there's a lot of tiredness the things are in a routine they're repetitive but what has to keep on going is for you to think that there is something new there's going to be a new experience every day even if it's within the routine even if your task is simply to greet a person at the gate trust me you will end up meeting somebody new every single time there'll be a new experience post the festival departures very important so while the people have successfully reached the festival successfully reached your event it is very important to make sure that they get back home safely so with the same assurance that you've got them to the festival with the same diligence with the same passion you have to make sure that they get back to where they've come from the festival being in jaipur a lot of people do extend their trips they usually go to an agra or an udaipur or jaisalmer or some people of internationally travel may do a fest- may do a tour in india but still the task at the festival is for us to ensure that they have checked out of the hotel and they have left the city of jaipur as per our promise as per our commitment to them the last part feedback like i said and i have reiterated multiple times all the processes from anything that you do in life may be education may be actually planning for a festival uh may be buying a vehicle the only reason we keep upgrading our vehicles or upgrading our phones is because we've given a feedback we've realized what works and what does not work and we are offered an improved version so it's important that we get the feedback what worked what did not work did the cars reach on time did the cars did not reach on time uh were the drivers cordial were we greeted properly and that's part of the feedback usually this is done through a feedback form uh with tools like google or mailchimp you can actually create a feedback form online and share it with your database and then collate the answers that they share with you well this is just me listing down some of the possible crises because over the last i've been uh at the jaipur literature festival for over 10 years now and these are just some of the possible crises and just how uh do we usually get out of it and um, you know to begin with calm and not panic that's the most important part because as organizers of a festival as a cultural event if you are the first people to panic then it's going to resonate it's going to be a domino effect on everybody that you're working with so force majeure which is the fury of nature so in the past there have been times when it has rained in the ven- uh, at the festival in jaipur we've had to shut down a few outdoor venues we've had to move the venues inside so this is something that you cannot have much control on the second are the local strikes and political unrest a number of times these are these are very these are very basic 
you have an election coming up you have like a strike a union strike a cab strike there's nothing much you can do about it but yeah if you're aware of the dates you can plan for alternatives health and well-being like i said you know you do not have control over somebody who's probably falling sick or somebody who's unable to catch a flight you know you've missed a flight you've been unwell you've had a health issue you can't really do much about it quality control um so when you're doing a cultural festival there are a lot of ethos there are a lot of uh, principles that go beyond uh, go into it and it's important that the, those are disseminated to everybody who's working on it so from the organizer to the volunteer to the driver to the front desk of a hotel to the person who's actually serving you food so that quality control could be possible that somebody may not have been as cordial as you expected them to be but like i said these are the possible crises and the only way out is to keep looking into the things that can go fall into the cracks plan a plan b and go for plan c as well man made disasters we all know if there's a fire or if there's an anti social element or there's something that you can't really avoid uh, that's when the security comes into the place a key part of logistics which like i said i'm going to cover in one of the other segments last but not the least fatigue and human error like i said 5 days on your feet is a really long time for all of us and there's always a possibility of oversleeping forgetting to charge your phone or just being irritable after a point or not having the will to smile or answer questions but like i said even if life is in a routine there's always something that's out of the box there's always somebody new that you're going to meet there's always some new experience that you're going to have well that was a quick case study on the jaipur literature festival logistics there are so many more elements and there are so many more things that we can talk about and i hope we will eventually talk about well here's a small task for you i would love you all to pick up one element of logistics it could be communication it could be an emergency plan it could be creating an accommodation inventory or a travel inventory and work around it you could pick an existing festival a cultural event it could be a concert and make sure that you put all your pointers together you plan you budget you do the inventory you create an execution plan and share it with us it's going to be exciting and trust me event management is no longer just programming or just bringing artists on board logistics has become a very important part of this sector there are organizations which are just logistics solutions so which take care of just your travel just your transport accommodation or even security i hope you enjoyed this session thank you so much